In today's Abandon video, we are covering an incredibly ornate abandoned church in England that we visited in 2020. The stunning property has been standing for over a century, boasting architecture that is one of a kind and many belongings remaining. It is crumbling to the ground with every day that passes, losing its rare design. Join us as we venture inside to see what's left. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. In our last episode, we asked the question what was your favourite video that we filmed last year? We had many interesting responses, but have selected this one from Michael, suggesting the British Airways Flight Centre. This was up there of our favourites too due to its size and history, but we find we can never usually pick a confirmed top spot for the year. Either way, we hope to keep the bar high in 2022. This week we are asking, what changes would you like to see going into a new year? If you have any ideas for the channel, let us know to possibly feature in our next upload. As soon as we reached the imposing church, we knew it wouldn't be an easy infiltration. It is located in one of the busiest areas we've come across, with hundreds moving past it every minute. One glance showed us that the front was sealed tight, meaning we would need to look at alternate routes inside. Eventually, after a lot of difficulty, we were successful. However, we were fairly confident that we had been spotted accessing the structure, so it was important for us that we found the main attraction before being halted in our tracks. Yeah. The tiles are really nice. Yeah. Just want to see that main hall, if anything. I think it should be just through here. Speeding through a maze of tiled corridors, we inevitably came into contact with our goal. Yeah, this is more like it. There's a wall camera in there. That's in here. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. That ceiling is mad. Lost for words, from the beautiful scene before us, as well as the difficult entry, we stood amazed at the state of the architecture in the 1,500 capacity auditorium, most noticeably the towering dome with all of its intricate details. These folding chairs are quite nice. Simple but nice, but you can see that they've ran out here and started to use just normal wooden ones. All still in place. The building opened as a church in the early 20th century, ran by a local mission that soon started showing various religious screenings. This helped a quick conversion into a cinema, still managed by the church, which didn't last long. These huge windows were originally stained glass and then they've been boarded up probably because they were used as access points into this uh, theatre. Never seen a theatre with a dome ceiling though. You can see why they wanted it as a church. The architecture is stunning. We abruptly decided to move on to the upper floors that faced the road. More and more windows had been recently boarded, meaning it was fairly disorientating working our way around the dark regions. 
Just look at that organ. So many spider webs on it. If you plug that in, there's no chance it'll work. Look at these door frames. Or exit sign. Everything about this place screams old. Just like this. That is one dated table tennis table. I believe this should be the projector room. That's when the property was a cinema. Or maybe just for showing uh, religious films. It's old. It's a strange room, it's really tall. No projectors left, just the kind of design where they would have faced. The tiles are another special feature of the dated structure, delicately placed on all the walls spanning around the central hall. As we progress towards the entrance foyer, our nerves of capture slowly dying down, our torchlight was bouncing off their reflective material. This architecture is ridiculous. I didn't expect there to be much um, natural light in here. This room is quite interesting. It's like a miniature version of the main hall. You can see where there was a nice ceiling, but it's all crumbled to the ground where there's loads of rubble. These old notices are quite nice. Apparently the church opened in 1914. The floor. I've never seen a floor do that before. It's a total bump. Oh my god. It feels so weird to walk on. You can tell this place was less left untouched. All the books remaining. It's going to be like the reception area, like offices. Most spaces were full to the brim with items and belongings of past inhabitants of the complex. It was apparent that little was removed when the church had been vacated, yet sadly anything too valuable had been stolen. The floor is so bumpy. There's more books. It's always such a shame when you see abandoned books in buildings. Such a waste. And this place is pretty much the definition of that. I assume these doors will take us into the uh, main hall. Hmm. Nope, oh, they're locked. These are open. Wow. Again, the floor. It's so quiet in here. Look at this piano, oh my god. This has to be up there with pianos I've seen. Wow. That is amazing. <laughs> it's like something from a film. Only two decades after the church became a cinema, it was closed and was reverted back to a house of God, maintaining the same usage until closure under 10 years ago. This was due to multiple surveys expressing safety concerns regarding the site's old-fashioned build and the cost implications to restore it to an acceptable standard.
can't believe it still works. Following the completion of the entrance side of the building, our curiosity relating to some of the offices we had already seen took us to the back rooms in search of interest. Jesus. It's like a miniature. Oh my god. It's like a miniature sick. chapel, isn't it? That's fucking. <laughs> the windows are intact here as well, and there's no boards. Yeah, they have a look. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, on, on this side, so you can kind of make them out. You couldn't make them out in the main hall. A few of these small chapel areas were positioned on the lower floor, where we would assume they would be used during private services. That's quite sad. The piano's a gift to... Uh, someone related to the church. Really? Yeah, and they've just left it. Oh no, it was someone who died in uh, World War Two. They got killed by a shell really? in 1940, yeah. Back in the back parts of the church. This looks like a kitchen. Yeah, there's a massive room here, lad. Huge chapel. It's like a Sunday school, kind of. Yeah, probably. Look at the I chairs. Mean, it's been used for some sort of preaching. Probably. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there's a piano at the front yeah. over there. Another grand one, just like a smaller version of the one in the main room. Look at the chairs, though. <laughs> That's mad. <laughs> The curvature of the chairs caused by the bending floorboards was something we had never seen before. In a relatively untouched room, it was almost the only thing that proved it to be abandoned. As mentioned earlier, it is absurd to take into account the amount of books and pianos ruined because of neglect caused decay. It is tragic that they couldn't be saved and offered to charities or schools nearby. Look at that mould. That is disgusting. Oh jeez. There was 600% squatters in this room. Okay, they found the squat where the, the squatters live. The den was very upsetting to see, but we believe it hadn't been used for some time. A lot of the belongings seem to have been rummaged through. In addition, the property is very well sealed these days, so it's unlikely that squatters would exit and return to it each day. The signage is really cool. Water dripping, that noise. Is it? Yeah, coming from a hole in the ceiling. It sounded electrical, so I thought there might be power on. <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs at the rear portion of the church, little remained except for graffiti and inhuman trespassers. Quite modern around these back parts, but this bit seems to have a similar architecture. Level as at the front of the building where the main hall is. These huge windows are quite impressive. I'd assume this would have been another hall, but it's been partitioned off over the years. Now it's well housed by pigeons. Despite our worries that our exploration would be cut short, we were able to document the entire building comfortably in our own time. Even though it was just as tricky leaving as getting in, we were able to exit undetected. Once the religious complex was prized for its incredible and impressive appearance, and many would take in its unique craftsmanship every week. It would be a staple for the area, overlooking the populated streets, including its visitors. 
Nowadays, the premises are very dilapidated, a potential hazard to people wandering outside, let alone anyone that is willing to see its interior. For us, it was definitely one that was saddening, as we momentarily walked through its historic floors, imagining how many others had done the exact same thing. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us on this feature. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to never miss a future upload. Here are some of our photographs captured at the abandoned church. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description, where we share images from our explores months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. This was our first video of 2022. We have massive plans for the upcoming year and we can't wait to share them with you. See you next time.